Hello friends, here we are, yay, we are only, only nine days away, am I right, am I saying nine days away, yes it is, nine days away from the 12th US Spirit Symposium, it is a big deal, and you know why, if you have been watching this program since the first day, you know why, but if you haven't, we will repeat it. It's the first time that we have a National Spiritist Meeting in the capital of the United States of America, Washington, D.C. It's a big deal. It's a big deal also because it's the work of the good. Of course it is. Not only the Spiritist work, but also the Spiritist work. Emmanuel has said through Chico Xavier that all the works of the good, they are, they come from God. Of course, we are all instruments in you too. And the more you share this news, the better it is. It's an opportunity for us to process a lot of therapeutic works in both realms of life. You're invited to join us on that day, April 21st, 2018, from 9 a.m. to 6.15 p.m. for children adults, and youth, people coming from all over the United States, and volunteers with their loving hearts and loving hands there to serve you, and for a very symbolic fee, adults only $30 for the whole day, and children only $10 for those who are parents, it's unbelievable, because a babysitter does not even cost $10 an hour, no more in the United States. So it's unbelievable, it's quality work and more than everything, it's brotherhood. It's an opportunity for us to learn, to serve and hopefully to love more too. Why not, right? Yes, and tonight, of all the features of these enlightening answers to our daily questions, we're going to trim down to how we can help others by sharing spiritism. The spiritist teachings, reaching out to others through spiritism, with spiritism. And to talk about this with us and much more, we have here with us our dear friend, Susana Simões. How are you, Susana? Thank you for being with us. Hi, Vanessa. Thank you for having me. It's um... a national effort in by joining the board of the United States Spiritist Federation and specifically working in the outreach efforts. But let us talk to the broader aspects for those who are coming to the symposium and may say, oh, well, I may read all of this in a book or so. What is the importance of actually dedicating a day to study, and to learn, and to serve in this spiritist setting that we call the symposium. What would you like to share with us since Emmanuel, before I pass the word to you, forgive me, but I will just add a few remarks by Emmanuel that may give us more feel to feel <laughs> this good that is the symposium. In the book, Roteiro, not yet in English, Chapter 26, he says to us the following. Human beings are in, enveloped by a notion of thoughts, nourishing themselves of this mental substance. And in a way, we ingest thoughts without noticing. He says conversations, nourish conversations, thoughts, amplify thoughts. And that's the reason why he says, those who do not acquire higher knowledge, who do not exercise their will to overcome their inferior circumstances, they will stay in the ordinary love. Thus, the importance of constant renovation in the good, in the infinite good. Working incessantly is duty. Service is 
to elevate yourself. To learn is to conquer new horizons. Horizons and to love is to uh, become better yourself. So, what is the importance for all those who are watching us, Susana, in um, spending this time together and learning more of spiritism? Well, first, what a beautiful message, and uh, it speaks to us about thoughts, um, the importance uh, and the fact that we are constantly assimilating thoughts. And I think that today we live in a society, um, you know, I'm going to make a confession here live. Um, I debate, I go back and forward with the social media and all that. Um, I recognize um, that it's a neutral uh, tool, but that can be used either for to spread good ideas, but also to spread a lot of um, chaotic ideas as well. And so I'm constantly, lately more than ever, um, vigilant about what I put in my mind, what I am absorbing, because I feel that there is so much disharmony. There is so much um, uh, disorgan disorganized thought out there. So it's, uh, it's true what you said. We can um, actually feed our minds and our brains and our souls with some uplifting uh, reading, um, you know, meditation and things like that. But nothing, nothing like coming together in a day with people who are uh, there under the law of affinity. They have affinity for the same topics, for the same ideas. They share the same vision. They share the same dream. You put all these people, all this energy, all this willingness in one room. And then you give people opportunity to spend a whole day listening to uplifting messages. You have time for discussions. You have forums. You have courses. You have breaks where people come together and they share their thoughts about the lectures, but they also share their thoughts and ideas about what they're doing, each one in their specific uh, cities, in their specific centers. And then you can only imagine what the effect of that is in terms of uh, coming together and generating an atmosphere and a vibrational level of goodness, of like one intent, one dream in one room. So talking about feeding your soul, projecting something good, a dream, right? Uh, and putting everybody together. I think that it's really unbeatable, right? So every time you go to one of these conferences, um, you know, you and I and so many people, I see some people who, who have joined us, um, you know, we are doing that daily work of spreading the message of spiritism. And we have our limitations and we have our difficulties, um, many. So these times are also times they are extremely important because they nourish our souls. We get the feeling that we are also not together, that although we may be very few in one specific location, there there are many of us. Okay, we're not like millions of people, but we are growing numbers and we are not alone, you know. The spirits are with us, but there's a number of incarnates doing what we're doing. And so it's just like, I think it's really important. And like I said, it's unbeatable when it comes to putting an idea together, joining forces and creating, you know, something positive. We need opportunities to come together to collaborate in the construction of a positive ideal positive ideas of a vision that, you know, by being there, each one that goes contributes with their energy, with their thoughts. So we all together. So that's, that's what I, what I think. That's how I see the symposium in terms of a, an opportunity to disseminate a message because it all, all, everything starts in the mind, right? The symposium is started on the minds of people who, had the vision of the symposium. So we, we, 
we have an idea, we project that idea, and then the resources come together and then ideas become realities. So we need people to go, to join in, to join in the dream, to join in the idea so we can build this momentum more and more in our country to help things to come to reality. Exactly. And you said in our country, in the United States of America, we need to team up to really change the course of events. And uh, if we don't want to influence people in other ways and forms, this is one way. Inevitably, we influence one another. And talking about influence and also charity, using this very expression, because Emmanuel, as you know, Susanna, used, he has this famous statement that the greatest charity we can do is to disseminate the teachings of spiritism. Right. So, and some people don't understand what he means by it because he's mm -hmm. like, oh, what exactly is this? What would you say to somebody who is puzzled about such statement? <laughs> I don't know what they're puzzled about, but let's go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, yes. Let's talk about the, the, the meaning of the message, right? So the meaning of the message for many of us, I have heard, uh, perhaps not everybody feels this way, but I think, I think it's very safe to say that this is a very common feeling among people who have embraced spiritism, that this message of spiritism has saved their lives, mm -hmm. has saved their lives because it has given them purpose, meaning, consolation uh it's it's a light so it does not remove uh the challenges of life it does not take away the trials they're absolutely necessary for our spiritual growth and enlightenment no one grows uh without challenges they're uh they're necessary they're the exercises uh, that uh, God provides us in order to grow. But spiritism gives you the tools, the inner tools, to actually deal with those adversities and to learn from them. So the difference between someone who has had a chance, has been blessed with the message of Jesus, and someone who has not, and especially under the light of spiritism, then is, is this. Two people can be facing the same situation, the same challenge, but the resources, the understanding, the faith, you can be having a very difficult time without ever losing your ground, without ever going into despair, because no matter how painful a situation may be, you know that that pain is working on your soul and is taking you from one edge to another, from one place certainly and always to a better place. So this certainty saves lives. And so if it saves lives, then the biggest charity that we can do is to disseminate this idea that teaches us about what life is truly about. So it has done so much for us, so much. I feel that all of us, or you know, the majority of us, carries within ourselves an incredible sense of gratitude for the message. We are blessed to have the opportunity to have this message in our lives today. So it's just natural. It should be natural, I would say, that we want to tell others, that we want to take this message to other people so that you know, uh, that little story of uh, two friends that um, meet on the spiritual realm and one of them, I'm sorry, I don't remember exactly the source right now, but one of them is upset with the other one because he knew all about the spiritual life and never told him. And so imagine that, right? You have friends, you meet them in the spiritual realm and they realize that you knew so much and you never share with them, wow. you know, all the things that you knew. So that's that's serious. And so we need to we need to I think it's important that we understand what this uh, statement means and that we integrate as much as possible in our, our lives. And this can be done in different ways. Right. I think the symposium is extremely important. 
And I think that people should be encouraged no matter who you are or where you are in this country, no matter if you were two, three, five, 10, 15, get together with the spiritual centers, with, you know, whoever is around you, create little workshops where people can come together and collaborate and share ideas. That's one way, right? And then don't uh, give up on the work that you were doing in your uh, spiritual center. And most importantly, I think that the primary uh, source of dissemination is truly the transformation that we undergo, hopefully we are all undergoing, so that people is like, wow, you were, you were, you're different, right? You're different. Everybody oh. is, yeah, yeah. So what, what, what is that about you? You know, and they become curious. They become curious about the way we live and about the way we deal with uh, difficulties in our lives. Exactly, Susan. It's so, especially in the moment we are living in, in the world now, at this very moment, so critical in many ways, and uh, we cannot take this lightly. I mean, we, we should really consider how we can do more. The spirits always told Chico Xavier, through Kardec, the mediums at Kardec's time, throughout the teachings that came through Leon Denis, and then throughout the literature of all spirits, through the mediumship of Chico Xavier, we see time and again, they say, it's not enough. We always need to do more, 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 more. There is always more. Why? For the reasons you said. There are many people who are yet to know of it. Just this message we got from the book Roteiro by Emmanuel through Chico Xavier, he says it. He says, we absorb without noticing the influence of others. And that affects us. Yes. Imagine our children. They go to school. They exchange uh, vibrations and impressions. They come back. I often see children. They are one way. And then they go off. They come back like, Mama Mia, what happened to you? <laughs> it's as if they turn to be somebody else. And we understand as spiritists what happened. And they still don't have the mechanism to filter consciously, to know what to do, how to handle it. So it's very serious. And we, the parents, the educators, have grave uh, responsibility. With spiritism, things become, in a way, easier or at least we would say it gives us tools to work with it. And this workshop, we're go this uh, symposium, there will be a workshop for educators and we would say even parents. Parents ask often, how do I teach spiritism to my children? How do I do the God at home, etc." cetera? Mm -hmm. In that workshop the, about education, they will be giving also information in that regard. Right besides the other workshops and uh, roundtable discussions, short talks that are going to be available there as well. For those who are watching us, just go to spiritismposium.org, my friends, because that's where the registration is. Susanna, you know, every day we get emails from people who are getting excited. A few days ago, we got some emails from people saying, I thought I couldn't go, and now I can. I'm so excited. We'll be there. And and that's really exciting that people can make it to this opportunity. And we would say, for those who can't and want to make it next year, usually around April, May, there will be another symposium. Josara Korngold already shared it's going to be in San Francisco. So, you have a year to prepare yourselves. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Put in the calendar, you know. It's something that um, with, with planning, uh, you know the event's going to happen. I mean, that's uh, our 12th, so 12th year that's uh, uh, happening. And so it's something that um, you can, you have the whole year to prepare. And, and it's definitely, definitely worthwhile experience. I remember the first one, and it's been a pleasure to see the way it has grown, 
and uh, how many people have joined, uh, how many centers participate. It's really, it's really inspiring. It's an inspiring event and uh, definitely worthwhile. I think that everybody who goes, it's like, it's ready to go back the next year. Exactly. And as you said, this is such a unique event in the whole Spiritist movement around the world. It's so unique because all Spiritist centers team up to join forces, to volunteer, to come together, to sponsor as well. So it's, it's so unique in so many ways. It's really creating a beautiful identity of our movement in the United States. And to give some more, Susanna, in another book by Emmanuel, Living Spring, as we prepare to join forces here with the, everyone who is at this very moment, even if you are on demand, feel it as we are doing this live. On chapter 117, he says, we have what we give. Many people, they're like, I don't know why this is happening in my life. We receive what we give. If we didn't give it today, it's the result of that in the past. So it's going to pass. But the problem is what we're sowing today. So he, I'm not going to read the whole message, just a few excerpts. And he begins by quoting Paul in Acts chapter 20, verse 35. It's more blessed to give than to receive. He says, when someone refers to the New Testament passage that says that the act of giving is a greater blessing than that of receiving, almost all students of the good news think of the word money. Of course, when we think about material things, there is always more joy in helping than in being helped. Nevertheless, we must not forget spiritual gifts, which emanating from within us increase the level and the intensity of the joy around us. Those who give reap the happiness of seeing the multiplication of what they have given. Offer kindness and you will encourage the sowing of fraternity. Spread the blessing of forgiveness and you will strengthen justice. Administer goodness and you will see an increase in trust. Give your good example and you will ensure the worthiness of your character. He goes on and on and he says, we have what we give. Give your neighbors something more than your money. Give them your interest, your health, your joy, and your time. And you will actually find yourself in possession of the sublime gifts of love, balance, happiness, and peace today and tomorrow in this world and in the life eternal. How about that, Susanna? I loved it. I had a lot of thoughts while you were uh, reading. Um, we live in a society um, that um, suffers from a perception of scarcity. Um, and Dr. Brittany Brown has a, a amazing work on this area where, where she talks about it, uh, scarcity. But we all, each one of us, in fact, have an abundance of resources, an abundance of love, an abundance of possibilities and of talents that we can give. And that the amazing thing with this message, it, that is so true, it's hard to understand it at a cognitive level, but it's easy to understand at an experiment, experiential level. When you give from what you have, and this is the invitation that I leave to every single person who is listening to us, give. You all have something to give. You don't have to be a speaker. You don't have to be famous. You don't have to be anything. We all are special and our contributions are very unique. You have love, you have a smile, you have a minute of your time to talk to someone, to answer a question, to say welcome to a guest who is walking to the symposium for the first time. You are giving. And the more, it's an amazing phenomenon because the more we invest, 
the more we pour our souls out into the work, the more we realize how much love we have within ourselves. It's, it's, it's truly, truly amazing. And you can only realize the abundance of love that you have in the exercise of giving love. It seems a contradiction, but it's actually not. So again, hard to understand in a cognitive way, but I invite you to experience that by putting your drop of love into this work and joining us at the symposium. Yes, thank you, Susana. And as Jesus said, it's not enough to know. We need to feel it. And that's what Susana is talking about. Let us feel it. So talking about feelings, let us invite everyone, Susana, please lead us into a prayer, a prayer of harmonization, of good feelings and thoughts and vibrations to these beautiful therapeutic works that are already happening in the spiritual realm and happening gradually in the material realm as well. Shall we? Sure. Thank you. Okay, so I will invite everybody who is joining us at this time that we put our minds together, but most importantly, our feelings, our sentiment together in this prayer by saying, Dear God, dear Father, we are here. We are here ready to serve, ready to give, ready to expand and to let unfold all the possibilities and all the love that we have within our souls. In name of our brothers and sisters, in name of our own rehabilitation, in name of goodness. At this time, we ask you to bring together all these feelings, all this sentiment, in one dream, in one vision, and let it spread around this country. Let it spread and to be with all the people who will be participating in one way or another at this event. Let it be at the place where we will meet in nine days. Let it be most especially in our hearts and in our souls in the sweet form of joy and hope. We thank you for your loving presence. We thank you for your guidance at all times. And we hope that this prayer, this intention, and those thoughts can be taken as a small token from our hearts in name of the cause that we all embrace. Thank you so much, and so be it. Thank you, Susana. Thank you so much. You're very welcome, Vanessa. Thank you so much for the invitation. It was so lovely. Thank you so much. And friends, don't forget, we're only nine days away. Come back. I know some people, they pack a month in advance. So <laughs> you can pack. And prepare yourselves. If you haven't made plans, you still have time. Nine days away from the 12th U.S. Spirit Symposium. It's really Christmas on Earth. Come join us because it is about brotherhood, togetherness, and a lot of enlightening answers to our daily questions. Thank you and until tomorrow for another countdown for this beautiful 12th U.S. Spirit Symposium. Thank you, friends.